Hi guys, welcome to Pixel Affair. It's Kobe here, and in today's video, we are going to see how we will do this using Cinema 4D standard shader. So this is a video which was done by um, Roger Kilimanjaro on Twitter. I saw this on Twitter, and it was quite interesting. And he has a video here which actually does some sort of breakdown how this was done, right? And I think it was Cinema 4D that he used, but this was just a quick breakdown, and I think probably a different renderer. But let's see how we use our Cinema 4D's default material shaders and render uh, standard renderer to do this effect. So I'm in Cinema 4D and I'm using Cinema 4D R26, but this can be done in almost every Cinema 4D version, right? So let's first of all create our base, the object that we are going to um, use in the scene. So I'll come to my front view and I'll create, take the spline to um, spline pen tool and I'll start drawing the shape for our vase. So let's quickly do that. So I'll click here and create some point somewhere here. So now we've created our vase and it's quite big. If I actually create a cube, you can see the vase, um, the size of the spline is quite big. So let's select it and make sure we are in model mode. And now let's kill it down a bit, right? Yeah, I think it's fine. And now let's go ahead and create a lid. Um, a lid. So I'll come into my object now, create a lid, and I'll make the spline a child of the lid, right? Now you can see everything is fine. Let's select the spline and come into its intermediate point. It's if it's set to adaptive, you can change it to uniform so that if I change it to garage shading with lines, you can see it's very uniform mesh. All right. So now let's go ahead and create and give our vase a bit of thickness. So I'll come into my um, object again and I'll create the cloth surface. I'll make the lid a child of the cloth surface. And now I'll and it's giving it a bit of subdivision, which is fine. We want it. We can actually even increase it and give it a bit of thickness like five, which is also fine, right? If your cloth surface is not like in here, if you are using a very older version of Cinema 4D, then the cloth surface will be somewhere in the simulate um, tab, All right? So now if we hit render, everything is fine. So let's go ahead and create our material that will control our textures. So now I'll come into my material um, manager and I'll create a new material by clicking on this plus button, right? So if I click create a new material, I'll double click to open the material editor. And now I'll, I'll make sure in the luminance, I'll first of all uncheck color and check uncheck everything. And I'll check luminance, right? And you are going to use gradient. So in the textures, I'll click drop down all the options we have here and you choose gradient. So if I click on the gradient and we go inside, we can actually get our knots to get closer to each other. Something like this, right? Or if you want to be precise, you can actually select this knot and make it say um, 51, all right? And I'll select the height and I'll make it maybe 50. You can see it's very precise, right? So now let me click and close it. So now we have our um, texture uh, black and white. Now let's apply it to our cloth um, surface or our vase. Let me name it vase, right? So now we've applied it to our vase. Let me also make sure it's set to garage shading with no lines. And now you can see um, our object in our viewport. Now, if we can, how do we control our object, right? So typically, if let me do it this way, if we move, let's say for instance, in this case, it's working perfectly, but if I'm using something like a different object, right? Say for instance, let me create a cube, right? And I click and drag it on the cube. You can see it's giving us a different um, angle, you see? Different sides of the black and white, but we want it to be straight. So that's why we wouldn't use um, this particular 2D U. We want to change it from 2D U to 3D linear. And you can see in the 3D linear, 
it's giving us a different um, look, right? But we don't, we come down to the start and the end. We don't want any of them. So we set it to zero, zero. And come back into the start, the middle one, which is supposed to be the Y. We set it to like 200 centimeters. And I can see it's giving us this shape, right? Now, the last thing, one thing we have also have to do is the down here, the space, we have to change it from object to texture space, right? And now we can add a little bit of turbulence. So this is where we add our roughness. So let me add turbulence like probably um, five to it. And the one unfortunate thing about the turbulence is that you don't get proper representation um, in the viewport. So to, for us to see our viewport, you have to actually make sure interactive render region is on. So if I click and hold on this, I'll get all of this and I'll bring interactive render region. And now you can see, we see um, our, how do you call it? Our viewport, like how the texture looks in our viewport. Right, so now let's go ahead and start playing with our turbulence to get the kind of feel we want. So maybe I reduce the scale in here to probably like five, right? And I'll maybe increase the turbulence like 10. And the octaves to probably three, all right? Maybe the scale a bit more down to two. So from here going, you just play around with it to get what you, you feel it's cool for you. And I'll probably increase this one to like 15, all right? Now, the next thing is that frequency, you can add frequency to it. And the frequency, what it does is that it adds animation to the roughness um, of your um, table. And so uh, it sort of animated over time. So if I move it here, you can see there's a bit of change, right? You can see here, if I move it somewhere and see it has changed. So you can increase the frequency and it will be how fast the animation will be move or how slow. So probably let's set it to two for now. And I think everything is now set. You can go ahead and use it to um, dispel, change our materials, right? So after everything is done, the next thing we have to do is to basically um, animate it, right? But we will use our, how do you call it? Our texture tag to animate it. So let's select the texture tag. In the texture tag, come to the coordinates tab, right? And we make sure all of them, everything is set to 100. We make sure this one, the Y, the S Y, the skill Y is set to something like 360 or even more. Like 360 is fine in this case. But if you have a huge scene, um, 360 might be small. And the reason why we are making it like that, so we want it to be long enough that so that the, you see the black, let me first of all, take off the interactive render region. So if I click select it again, it will go. So make sure the black can cover the whole vase and at the same time transition and the white too can cover the whole vase, All right? Enough. So that's why we made it that long. So it starts from um, black and then now it ends with white. So that's what you are going to do. So let's start our keyframing. So at, because you don't see what's the viewport, sometimes you have to make sure what you are seeing is what it is before you start keyframing, right? Because you don't see in the viewport. Let's increase our timeline to like probably even 500 to get enough. So now let's set a keyframe at frame um, zero, somewhere 90 and at frame maybe 150. Let's bring in our white, I'll make sure it's set to like mm, 450. So if you hit play and see it comes in and it goes, right? So that's what you are going to use to control our material. So now that everything is fine, I'll come into my luminance. I'll just click on this or we can simply right click and copy, the, right click on the texture, copy and come to alpha, make sure alpha is on, right click on it and paste. And now we don't want the luminance again. Now we can bring our, back our color. So let's say our color is um, red. Let's choose red to start. So you can see it's not, there's nothing. And now all of a sudden it comes in, but there's that roughness if we render at the end. 
So this is what you are going to use to control um, um, my vase coming in, right? So after our alpha is set, we can do the same thing, right click, copy, and come to displacement, right click on the texture and paste, right? And make sure our displacement is checked. Now, if we hit play, and we see what's going on. I see it's giving us some displacement, but it's everything is going crazy. So first of all, let's change the displacement uh, displacement type from intensity centered to just intensity. Still, nothing much changes. And then another thing, the height we reduce it a little bit, to like three. Um, yeah, let's assume this is fine, right? Another thing is that because we don't have enough segments, the displacement wouldn't look um, as clean. So we have to add sub polygon displacement. So it means you have to make sure it's breaking our polygon in, uh, during render time uh, more further. So it adds a bit uh, four levels, right? And now if I go down and hit render, you see it takes a little bit of time to render, but it's doing what it's supposed to do. So now, um, let me actually go back a bit so that we see what happens somewhere here. Hit render and I can see our displacement is quite okay. So another thing you have to do is to make sure round geometry is also sometimes on if you are using some round object because um, the um, displacement can sometimes make your polygons look a bit jagged, a little bit. So when roundness is on, it helps. So now everything is fine, right? So let's go ahead and add our material. So now that we have our first material, so let's assume, let's create a different material. So I'll create a new material, apply it to the vase, and we are using the material stacking in my 4D. So now I'll just make sure the red texture, which I just created, um, I created from the mat at, um, black and white alpha, that one comes after this white. So if I hit play, you can see it comes in. So it's from white and now it's turning red. If we hit play, take a bit of time because of the displacement, right? I can see now it's coming in smoothly, right? And everything looks fine but if we hit render you can see the shape of our vase if we hit render let it happen you can see the displacement is still on right it's making our vase quite um especially look at the tip it looks like it's been um extruded or something Right, so that's where in the displacement of our texture. So I'll double click on this one and come into the displacement and I'll come into the gradient. Right, we don't want it to in the displacement, we don't want the white to stay on forever. So, what I'll do is I'll click on somewhere here to create another black knot and I'll drag it to somewhere here. Right, so the displacement starts right at the top and also fades back off. Right, so. If you hit play again, and so let me actually come into the displacement for us to render quick, reduce the uh, level subdivision to like two. And if I hit play, you can see it renders, you know, here, everything here is displaced, but at the top, it begins to go back to its default look, right? Goes back to its default look, right? So that's how you actually do without the displacement um, showing throughout, right? So after this is set up, you are basically um, through, right? Let's assume everything is fine, right? So this is how our first material is done. Then for us to create our other material, you click, hold control, click and drag this and we created a new material. So I double click on it and now, Probably change the color to something like uh, blue, right? And we want to create another um, overlay, right? So now I'll hold this because we've set everything, animation and everything in here. I'll just hold control and click and drag the tag to duplicate it as well. And then we replace it 
with the blue one right so now if you hit play it's rather the blue that will come not the red but then we want to offset the animation so because we have the tag selected we can click in here and you can see this gray thing click and drag and select all the materials we have and all the keyframes that we have for the material blue material tag and now we can offset it to like somewhere here and now if you hit play you can see red comes in and then as it goes let's actually move this one somewhere here red comes in and as it's going the blue also comes in and now you can go ahead and do the same thing so i can now go ahead create any different material hold control to click and drag change it to something like yellow right and now i'll click and hold control and click and drag on this one as well and replace it with the yellow one and now one next thing i'll do is to offset the keyframes right so nice comes in right and now everything is fine so you can go ahead and now add your extra details and everything so for instance after everything is done and you think you are cool one thing you can also do is that you can come into uh, your material so for instance in this i'll come into the gradient for the alpha and i'll make sure they probably they you can come and do your variations in here so for instance the seed i'll set it three but whatever you do in this particular gradient you have to make sure you come into the displacement as well go into the gradient and make sure the, the cd is set to three make sure everything um matches but the quicker way to do all this thing is use um espresso so if i right click on this seed and i come to expression and i say set driver right and i go back into the displacement animation um gradient and i right click on the seed and say expression set driven absolutely that means that anything i do so if i go into the alpha and i change my seat to like five immediately i come into the gradient i come in there you can see it automatically has changed it so i don't need to do it twice so all the parameters you think you'll be changing more and all of that you can actually set um, use espresso to connect them so that you don't do double work of changing each other each and every other this was quite a little bit of espresso and this one is basic one you can actually do for all the parameters you want to do you just right click and go to expression set driver and the object you want to drive you right click on it and and go and right click again and go expression say set driven either absolutely or relatively right and now you can use one of the uh, parameter to control the two objects so this is how you do something like this using the standard cinema for the shader now the advantage the reason why i didn't use the project the flat um projection and stuff is that for instance Right now, in the yellow, let's say I want to change the yellow to something like a material. So I'll probably create, um, find a material somewhere here. I'll choose the, so let's say I like this material. Let me actually drop into my scene. And I like the texture, right? So I want to go into the material and I'll copy the texture, right click, copy. And come into the yellow material, the color. Right click on the texture and I'll say paste. Right? So in the material, you can see we have our uh, objects in everything is fine, but it's quite huge. But if I had using something like the plane, um change the projection to something like plane or cubic or something, I'll be stuck because if any changes I make, it will affect the alpha and the displacement as well. But in this case, because we are using the 3D linear and animating the coordinates in here, we can simply change our material. So for instance, I can use the length and length U and length V to set this one to like 40 by 40, right? And I can offset it anyhow and all of that if I don't want it, right? Maybe I'll do like 20, by 20 i mean you can play with it and everything to get what you think you want and now if you hit play comes in and down to come in and you are not seeing the viewport like i said you can't see the viewport well but when you render you can see it has um this view and that's how you do something like this using cinema for the standard shader and the standard 
material render. You can also um, actually come into the, for instance, so I can come into this material and in the displacement to get a little bit of some sort of ripple, I can come in here and you can see where the black ends. I can actually create another black knot and I'll probably create somewhere here in the middle. One which is a little bit, let's say, um, 20%, uh, you know, to give it a little bit of frippleness and stuff. All right. And now if I go for it a bit and hit render, it should give us like different layers of the displacement. It's not showing properly, but let me actually kiss it. Let's and let it get it quite close. It's quite huge. If we hit render, you should see like there's a little bit of uh, displacement somewhere here. If I make it even more obvious, increase the brightness to um maybe 80 or something. Right, let's make this one big so that I can get this one a little bit closer to um, the black somewhere here. All right. And now let's render again. You can see, you can see we have different layers. So after this um, ripple, you can see we have another gradient like ripple sort of coming through from the top as well. So you can actually add a little bit of rippleness in your um, animation, I mean, your your displacement to give it a little bit of feel and stuff like that. So it can be very, very useful. And this is how I'll actually typically approach something like this, looking at how he did it. So I think it's a very useful trick and you can use it in very similar, a lot of good instances to do a lot of interesting things. Hope this one was useful and you've learned some tips and learned something from it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.